Hey, this is Zach with MusclesAndVeggies.com coming at you guys today with the gut microbiome and how it could be the key to health and breaking through fat loss plateaus. For a long time, people have been talking about a lot of different tools for weight loss. They talk about uh, different diets, different forms of exercise, maybe intermittent fasting, supplements, you name it. And people have been talking about it for fat loss. However, what we're going to talk about today is the gut microbiome. Because if you have a screwed up digestive system, then you're going to have a really hard time using weight loss tools very effectively to lose weight. All the time I see clients come in, they've tried the ketogenic diet, they've tried a low carb diet, paleo, vegetarianism, raw vegan. They tried all these things because none of them are working effectively to help them reach their body composition goals. See it all the time. Nine times out of 10, what I keep coming back to is they usually have some sort of gut dysbiosis. Whether So I wanted to take some time to talk about the gut and how we can rebalance it to make sure that we can use these tools effectively. Uh, we can implement a little bit of intermittent fasting and a little bit of ketosis or low carb or paleo. And these things will work effectively when our gut microbiome is balanced and taken care of. Now, what are some signs that you may have a screwed up gut? IBS, that's a no brainer. Um, acid reflux or GERD, definitely. If you suffer with a thyroid problem, there's a really good chance that you have a screwed up gut microbiome. Hormonal problems, those nine times out of 10 will lead back to the gut. Autoimmunity, if your immune system is very sensitive, and flares up very easy, there's a really good chance you might have some gut problems. So just some quick stats about gut health and what we've been dealing with. 25% of North America suffers with some type of GERD or acid reflux. IBS affects Americans up to 10% of the population. The American Journal of Gastroenterology actually did a study that was super interesting. They looked at thousands of patients with IBS and the one thing that they all had in common, 84% of them had some sort of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that we call SIBO. Uh, so huge correlation there in people that have IBS and this overgrowth of bad bacteria in the gut. So there are two things that are the biggest offenders that want to destroy our gut microbiome. Number one is long-term antibiotic use. So now the most common thing you'll see with a lot of antibiotic use is a fungal or yeast overgrowth like candida that springs up after all these uses of antibiotics. The thing with candida is that you commonly see chronic fatigue, you see extreme sugar cravings, poor digestion, sometimes thrush of the mouth, yeast infections are common, hormonal problems, and you guessed it, weight gain and poor fat burning metabolism. So when candida has your hormones imbalanced and also has insulin sensitivity thrown off, this makes for case number one on why it's hard to lose weight with a gut problem. Then what happens is this good bacteria dies off and we have an overgrowth of this bad bacteria or fungals and yeast and things like that. All of a sudden our gut microbiome gets out of balance. We don't digest our food correctly. We don't absorb the nutrients in our food correctly and we don't produce as much energy. That's why you see a lot of chronic fatigue, a lot of hypothyroid problems, things like that spurring from gut dysbiosis. Speaking of thyroid disorders, 20 million Americans suffer from hypothyroidism. Levothyroxine, a thyroid drug, is the fourth highest selling medication out of all drugs in the U.S. 54% of hypothyroid patients tested positive for a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. In my practice, everyone I've seen that has candida or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth usually always suffers from chronic fatigue and their own hypothyroid medications. This reduction in T3 hormone is case number two against why it's hard to lose weight when you have a gut problem. It's estimated that five to 10% of the country is actually celiac or gluten sensitive. Number two is glyphosate. 
If you haven't heard about glyphosate yet, I strongly encourage you to do your homework on glyphosate. Uh, basically, glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup. It's all over our fruits and vegetables. It's all over the grains that we grow. Uh, if you're not buying organic and you've been eating a lot of different grain products, corn, wheat, soy, these things are full of glyphosate. And what they are doing is killing the gut bacteria and the gut lining of the, the small intestine. Now what's interesting is if you look at some CDC data of the rate of celiac and gluten intolerance and also the rate that we dumped glyphosate onto our crops. I found a really interesting 2013 study on glyphosate where they actually proved that glyphosate kills lactobacillus and bifidus bacterium. These are two of many important strains of our good gut bacteria that make a lot of different functions in the body happen. Glyphosate is actually killing them. And since these beneficial bacteria are so important for our fat metabolism, this would be case number three on why it's hard to lose weight when you have a gut dysfunction. So let's explain this microbiome in our small intestine is actually connected to our brain. And this is like a gorgeous jungle, okay? This jungle is full of all different types of species, but there's a balance in this ecosystem. And if you've ever seen a vine start to choke out an entire forest, this is exactly what happens in the gut microbiome when you have candida or one of these other overgrowths. It literally starts to starve out everything in the gut and take over. And then when this gut gets out of balance, then the body starts sending you signals that something is wrong and we need to get this back in balance. So listen to those signals. So it's time that we start looking at the gut then more than just digestion. It's time that we start looking at the gut in terms of our brain health, in terms of our energy, in terms of our metabolism. So in the gut restore protocol that I use, uh, we take a weed seed approach. First, in your garden, you have to weed out the bad guys. We do that with natural antifungals. Then we seed in our new seeds, so we seed in our probiotics. Then lastly, we feed what we seeded. So if we just were to cast out seeds into the garden, not weed the garden at all, the weeds are going to choke out those new species we put down. And anything that we feed into those is just going to feed uh, most likely the, the bad species we don't want to grow. So that's why we take this approach, weed, seed, and feed. So here at Muscles and Veggies, we don't guess, we test. And I use the organic acids test. It's the most valuable I've seen as for identifying overgrowth in the gut and what the gut is actually doing. And I think this test is so valuable, not just in my practice using it with my clients, but for anybody who wants a comprehensive look of what's going on in your gut. It'll tell you if you have a yeast and fungal overgrowth. It'll tell you if you have any markers that are too high or too low. Um, which would signal gut dysbiosis. And also we offer comprehensive online health coaching. Uh, if you want to get walked through this protocol, I can show you exactly how to do it. Uh, comment below or shoot me an email and I'll tell you what the program's all about. So there we go. We just want to break through weight loss plateaus by getting rid of that overgrowth in the small intestine and letting fat burning resume to its normal hormonal function. There's going to be another video coming out soon. I'm going to explain some more of my tricks and tips on breaking through fat loss plateaus. This is Zach with MusclesAndVeggies.com. Hope you guys found this enjoyable. If you learned something from this, if you got something you're going to use in your life, uh, I just ask that you share it with a friend. Look, look down below. Look at my subscribers. You can add to that. Share this with a friend if you liked it. Stick around. Learn more with me, Zach from MusclesAndVeggies.com.